Hello, Stu here from DIYmusic.co.uk. Uh, we've got the third part of our look at Fruity Loops FPC or Fruity Pad Controller. Here it is. Uh, if you haven't watched part one and two already, I'd uh, suggest you go and have a look at those. Uh, we're going to go straight into looking at this area down here where you've got the sample and the envelope section. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, the envelope basically can be used to control the volume or the pan of the samples that you're playing. By default, they're switched off. They work on a basic uh, sort of ADSR setup, which uh, is attack, decay, sustain, and release. Um, I won't go into all the details there. If you don't know about ADSR, you should look it up, check it out. Uh, so let's see it in practice. I've already got a little loop set up in here somewhere. Find it. Okay, so that's where we got to uh, with the previous couple of lessons. I've loaded up a few more samples in here now. So we've got our kicks, snare, hi-hat there. We've also got uh, these hi-hats. This open hi-hat is being cut by that. You can see how that works in the previous lesson. So I've also got some samples in here now. And a crash. So, how can we use these volume envelopes to uh, to muck around with them? Start with this one. That already had it switched on because I was messing around with it earlier, but... One uh, thing you might want to do is... <clears throat> Uh, possibly you don't want the sample to play all the way through every time you play it. Uh, by default, it just plays the whole sample when you hit the button. If that's the case, we would have no attack because we don't want it to fade in. We just want it to play straight away. The decay is uh, how quickly it uh, sort of fades and where it fades to after it plays. We just won't have any of that at all. Switch it on and you should see now when I take my finger off, it actually just stops the sample dead. There you go. See that in the piano roll as well. Let's see. So it will last as long as the note on the piano roll lasts. Take a short one now. So you can see how that works. So that's one instant use for that. Volume envelope is to allow a cutoff. So, so, sorry, let's do that here as well. See? Uh, let's shove that in here somewhere.
So I'm just making this up as I go along. Um, that. <laughs> So that's one thing you could do with that. Um, if you wanted to have a little uh, attack, you could set that here. Longer attack. I'm not going to have any attack on there for now. Um, what else can you do with this? Uh, pan? So if you wanted to automate the pan off to the side, you could do a bit of that. You need to switch it on, of course. These uh, grid lines uh, lined up with the beat. So if you play around with that, you can work out exactly what is one beat and what isn't. Uh, you can add by right-clicking to add points, and then you can left-click to move them around. Uh, you can change the curve by clicking on the bit in the middle there and dragging it. This is the same. It's very similar to automation clips. Right-clicking on a node gives you options to change the type of curve, or delete. So I'm going to get rid of all of this and get it back to normal. Go back to volume. So that's uh, one thing you can do. Um, Let's have a little play around. So, a crash here, and another one there. Let's load them in. That's one. Uh, oops. I'm just going to use the learn to assign that to my keyboard. Okay. <clears throat> this little button here is pretty cool. That lets you reverse the sample. Click on that. That can be very useful. Because the original sample had quite a long tail, it uh, does take a while to build up. You've got a lot of uh, uh, editing ability here. If you right click in the sample, you've got options here. You can load the sample or you can edit the sample. Now that will bring up Edison. And here we have, here we have our sample. It's showing it the right way around because it's reversed in there. So to get rid of that huge sort of pause before you get the actual reverse symbol, uh, we'll just cut it out here. Edison will be another, another lesson entirely, but I'll just do a quick edit here. Select that, delete. So now we've got that shortened. This bit here allows me to drag and drop the sample into a variety of places. I'm going to drag it into my FBC. Boom. And there is a shorter reverse symbol. Let's uh, get the old uh, volume envelope again so it stops when the key stops. And there we've got a very useful reverse symbol. I'm just going to... Sorry, I should stop making noises when I'm talking. I'm going to just stop this one when I stop the key as well. Turn it on. This little button is whether it's on or off, by the way. Okay. So now I can use that in my piano roll. Let's put one here. Give 
a bit longer to build up. Ah, that was a bit too long. Okay. See, that's pretty cool. Wrong one there. Just copy that there. And we got the uh, the makings of a fairly cool loop there. Might turn that down, maybe even tune it down. Okay, and just to get a little bit more creative, we've gone over 10 minutes, so I'll just do one last thing with this sample here. Let's have a bit more fun with a volume envelope. So let's stick it in towards the end of the loop. Hey! And let's reverse it to make it fit in with our reverse symbol. Um, let's have no, okay, so we'll turn the volume of the bomb, we'll have no attack. But let's play around in, in between. So you can right click, as I showed you, and add points anywhere in here. You can drag here to zoom scale. So you see how that volume is, uh, that envelope is affecting the sound in these waves now. Let's see how that sounds in the, uh, in the loop. That's a bit off time, let's put it here. <laughs> Not everything works. You gotta experiment. But you can see that is uh, how you can change the volume envelope. Just a couple of little extra things. There's a menu here. Uh, that means you can save and open these envelopes. So I'm just going to go back to the default. And get rid of that. I've just got basic reversing uh, horn. Other options in here are the kind of things um, that allow you to do much more complex editing. Um, I have almost gone into 15 minutes now, so I'm going to leave it there for now. But do play around with these, because um, there's loads of stuff you can do. It's really cool. Um, but I won't go on, because we are at nearly 15 minutes. Just play that loop through and see how it sounds.
there you go. I hope you found that useful. I've been Stu from diymusic.co.uk. Uh, check the links below the video or the webpage if you're on my website. Uh, you'll find me on Facebook and Twitter. I've got a bunch of uh, Facebook groups on the go that you can check out. Um, I'll leave it at that for now. I hope you find it useful and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.